Hi, welcome to the Cashman Preventing, Stopping, Reversing Diabetes show. We've been doing this for many years because I consider this to be very important. You know, I was a neurosurgeon 45 years, but most of the patients I was looking at, I, I thought a lot of them had diabetes, which was more important than what they came to see me about. It was difficult to get the message across, I think partly because the family doctor and medicine in general is not emphasizing enough uh, preventing stopping your verse in diabetes, which you can do about a month, 90% of the time. And that's what this show is all about. And you can look at my other YouTube shows and gather more information or many books uh, that I, I've written uh, uh, on it also. Uh, I try to change the hospital, the community, and, and it's been uh, difficult because industry is so heavily involved in this that in advertising and, and, and and, and lobbying money, and it's tough to change a culture, but that doesn't mean I'm stopping the music. I'll keep on playing the same tunes uh, it, to the point that uh, I even declared war on it. Just look at Rudy's war on diabetes. That, that's really what I'm saying is we probably, we, we, but my bullets are information, information. Those are my uh, bullets. And, and the beauty of it is the hope for all, all of us in the community is that you can get rid of diabetes probably in a month, most of the time. If you eat, change the type of food. It's not even starvation. It's the type of food that's doing it to us. I didn't even ask you to eat less. You can speed it all up uh, by following uh, a little bit of a fasting plan, I call it 16-8, not missing a day, a month, a year, nothing like that. Like fasting is even uh, in, in, in the Bible and religious books. That, that's thousands of years that's, that's been known. I'm just saying time-regulated eating, 16 hours. Uh, you don't have to be, uh, that you do it every day, maybe four or five days of, of the week, that you don't eat for, uh, and then eight hours that you eat. And what, what makes it even quicker if, since that's a constricted period of time, if you just eat two meals, it's the way I eat. And I, and I didn't do it on purpose for any, any reason, but I, I noticed my weight seems to be consistently 135, day in and day out, varies a pound here and there, depending whether I'm eating a little salt or, 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 or what, whatever. Uh, which, which is yeah, irrelevant. Uh, it's your body, instantly enough, tries to keep your weight the same as long as you're reasonable. And uh, if you're off a day or two, it doesn't. Your body mass index can go up, and your metabolic rate, the rate of metabolism in the body, can go up and down significantly every day. So just because you had a ate some bad food one day doesn't mean the next day you're going to gain five pounds. Uh, if you've lost five pounds or gained five pounds, odds are that's water, and you'll get rid of it uh, quick enough. It's like when I play in the tennis tournament, I got home, I lost 10 pounds. Yeah, and the reason is we have in us glycogen, that's sugar storage, about 100 grams in the liver and about 400 grams in your muscles. But each but each pound of glycogen has three pounds of water attached to it. So if you're using up that much sugar playing, say, in a long three, four hour tennis match like I've played in, in the uh, city uh, tournament, uh, I'm using the glycogen as energy. And remember I said about the water, that the water, uh, you, sweat, you sweat it out, you're gonna lose a lot of weight. And you find out in reality, two or three days later, you only lost a pound, okay? But I remember before I understood metabolism, uh, that, that uh, occurs. I kind of known this about diabetes for years, but I, I gained uh, maybe 15 years ago or so now, uh, I got a hold of a book, Diabetes Epidemic and You by Joseph Kraft, K-R-A-F-T. Um, you can read this two or three days, 
if you uh, read a lot, like I, I, I read, you know, I read a book about it three days, maybe it took me one night, and uh, it, it, it very well written and is written so doctors can read it and, and non doctors uh, can read it. it, it it's simply written. Uh, and Joseph Kraft was a pathologist, pathologist. Uh, that means he looked at the bottom line, he did autopsies, and he, he looked at the bottom line in the Tower office in Chicago, and he became a nuclear one way. He could inject uh, some uh, atoms that are, that are atomically charged uh, to, to study things, so that's a very rare person. You have to have a license for that. Uh, uh, so he can study the uh, human body. And, and, and his original work and papers were published back in 1990s, yeah. And then he published this book, 2006. And that's how long we have known um, that uh, if we did serum insulin testing on people, we could anticipate the road to diabetes about 20 years before it's time. So when you go to the doctor's office, they want your blood sugar and glucose tolerance test. If, if suppose you weigh 210, and like I did a few years ago, went to General Motors for the hospital, and, and we saw this 220-pound gentleman, and the nurse is talking to him, and she was from a local pharmacy school from North Manchester. That now is, yeah, and, and she was uh, was telling this gentleman the way 220, his fasting blood sugar was normal. He was not diabetic because he asked about it, which is a good question. I didn't buy that. You read this here. Then, then she ran a glucose tolerance test where you swallow sugar and do fasting one hour, two hour, at my suggestion. He had that done, and, she, and that was normal. She said, see, see, a cold cashman, uh, he's not diabetic. I said, that still doesn't prove it. Get a serum insulin test. If that's normal, he's not diabetic. What I'm saying to you, uh, if they've told you you're not diabetic, you're overweight, go back and get an insulin test or glucose tolerance test, and if that's normal, get an insulin test. Uh, then you'll know if you're diabetic or not. Why is that? Because it's a lot easier early on to get rid of your diabetes. You may need to lose five, 10 pounds instead of 50. And I also like to mention that there are thin people who have diabetes. Yes, they have fat in their liver and their pancreas and knocked out their pancreas. They don't make insulin anymore uh, or make less. And they're now diabetic and they don't know it. Uh, and all the complications of diabetes, uh, 200 different diseases can be caused by diabetes. 200, from dementia to heart disease to strokes to cancer to amputations, dislocations, renal transplants, liver transplants, is unbelievable amount of illnesses caused by diabetes. That's the reason I want to prevent it, stop it, or reverse it. The good news is Dr. Lustig, uh, Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G, from Canada, it studies, he used to be a, a renal doctor. Then he noticed all the people with renal disease, they're all diabetic. Having a good heart, so be, he became uh, a diabetic educator. And you see him on YouTube, uh, F-U-N-G, Jason, he's got every week a new YouTube show, great guy, books to read, uh, and YouTube shows uh, uh, to watch. And, and he's also into fasting, big time fasting, but he's having you skipping days or weeks, not necessary. I say 16, eight. And in my book, incidentally, I have a great chapter uh, uh, on that. Uh -huh. And because you don't want these uh, diseases. That's the reason you want to be properly tested. And while they're running those tests, you also order a GFR, glomerular filtration rate, to find out if you're on the way 
to kidney disease. A lot of diabetes causes kidney disease, so get that, get that uh, also. You see if there's inflammation in your body, uh, get a HS, high sensitivity CRP, see if your body is inflamed. If it's inflamed, we know that, uh, and that can be, still be reversed. Uh, I want to know if you get kidney disease, okay, because kidney disease, heart disease, diabetes, they're all interrelated. Uh, That's the reason this is so important. But as Dr. Um, uh, Kraft book, in, in, on the cover, he says, should everyone be tested? Absolutely not. Only those concerned about their future. We all need to be concerned about our future because if you get the complications of diabetes the last 10, 20 years of your life, you'll be suffering from something. They'll be amputating you or maybe you're, you're living in a mental institution and you have depression. Most of Alzheimer's disease is due to diabetes. Most heart attacks are due to diabetes. And most heart attacks, a person just grabs their chest and they die. No warning. Yeah. It's not something, well, I change my diet when I get a problem. No, half a heart attacks, people just keel over. So uh, what I'm saying, please take it uh, uh, seriously. But, but this is a great reading. He then studied the patients, uh, about 14,000 patients, other doctors helped him, and he ran about five different curves on them of blood sugars. Uh, uh, before and after, and then he determined uh, how to diagnose uh, diabetes much, much earlier, children's diabetes, increased rates of cancer. Uh, in a wonderful book, I rarely meet anyone that has ever read the book. What's disappointing is the doctors, very few doctors, but if people had followed that, we wouldn't be having this huge epidemic of illnesses related to diabetes. When you see a heart on a, on a hospital like you see in, in town here, uh, uh, that's a disease that could have been uh, preventable. To top it all off, they have most of these patients on a statin drug. I now find out, and I give my last YouTube show on that, and you can watch it. Let me give you your own mind. Don't stop the drug. Just read about it, and I find out that really the statin industry, they made 30 billion bucks at least, the scam. Yeah, cholesterol is actually good for you. Our brain is made for, uh, largely from, from fat. Our glial cells in our brain make the cholesterol and fat to make us a, a healthy brain. Uh, so uh, the diabetes scam, uh, and, and I find out that a study insulin, for example, what does insulin do for diabetes? It stuffs the sugar into the cell, okay? And then the cell goes like that. That's why the diabetics who would take an insulin, they're all like this. Insulin's doing it, it's not that just the diabetes, it may, the, 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 being overweight it was a result of diabetes. It didn't cause their diabetes. And if you notice, you don't believe me where they give themselves a shot. The area swells because the cells are full of sugar. Yes, and uh, so you, you have to gather information uh, and then you read about the statin and you wonder what's going on in this world. Well, I'm throwing it all out there. Don't stop any of those drugs, insulin or statins without getting opinions from your doctor, but make him read books. You can go to a provider who doesn't know any of this. I rarely meet a provider who read the craft book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and there's uh, more proof. Here's another uh, book written by Tom Jelinek, J-E-L-I-N-E-K, Good, Goodbye Pins and, and Needles. And he very detailed explains the story uh, in, in there about insulin and about taking metformin and other drugs. Uh, he explains that in great uh, uh, detail. Uh, and, um, and he's even a PhD, but he did the, re the re research. And what's he saying? Uh, to rethink it and goodbye pills and needles. I agree. 
you can get rid of them two to four weeks. If you follow the fasting plan, maybe two weeks, call your doctor that your sugars are dropping. Maybe you get one of these monitors. You can tell on the phone what your blood sugar, blood sugar is. Not a bad idea if you change totally the way you eat. It's not, not starvation. No one asks you to eat less. We're asking you to eat different food. If you eat a different type of food, uh, which is very well explained uh, in another uh, book that I have here, uh, not that necessarily, you may not be overweight. You may be of normal weight, or, but if you are uh, overweight, here's a great book by Susan Ryan, Simply Keto. You may say, what are ketones? Simply keto. I encourage you uh, to uh, get this book, get in the library, you know, buy it cheaply. What I like, what I like about it, the first thirty pages or so, she explains uh, diabetes and, and 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 ketones. She herself lost a hundred and five pounds. I didn't say you had to lose that many, uh, but it, it goes. She explains the science of it, uh, and she has beautiful recipes in there, breakfasts, uh, snacks, uh, desserts. She doesn't speak mainly in there about fasting, uh, but if you use that, uh, it's quicker. And she puts down there the amount of calories that you eat. Remember, I t spoke about the food pyramid, about 50, 70 uh, percent. Uh, uh, good fats, omega-3 fats, uh, glycomole, for example, olives, for example, 20% protein, fruits and, and, and vegetables. And, and then uh, each recipe has, has in it uh, the exact amount of calories, the food content, and, uh, and if you have weight to lose, fine. Suppose you're thin, you have no, you don't feel you have any weight to lose, but if you, suppose you're diabetic and you are thin, there's fat in your liver, there's fat in your pancreas, and even if you're on insulin, remember, Jason, Lust, Jason Fong in his book, you could have had it in there for many years. If you eat the right way, the fat will leave the liver, and then the pancreas, the pancreas will wake up, and you'll secrete insulin again, and you will be a normal person quickly. I mean, that, that, that's an unbelievable uh, uh, chapter in his book. And, and he is scientific on YouTube all the time. I've read his books, uh, Jason Fong, I think, are good books uh, to read. And, and this Simply Keto book, you need to get some understanding. That's the reason I suggest look at some of these books and uh, look at my YouTube, look at Jason Fong's uh, YouTube. And, and what are ketones? Yes, so what, what are ketones? Uh, th th this is uh, very interesting. Ketones are molecules of energy made out of fat. And what happens is if you're uh, eating uh, more of a good fat diet, okay, olives, guacamole, and, and she uh, lists them all, all uh, uh, in there. Uh, then the blood sugar starts dropping because you're not eating many uh, sugar. Uh, and because your sugar is dropping, the, your insulin level is, is dropping with it. When it gets to a certain level, that causes your fat cells to open up, and fat is released because the body is telling you I need energy and, and it's making fat available now. And there's a signal from the hypothalamus, a leptin s signal. And, that, and the fat will then go to the uh, liver and is converted to ketones. Those are fat molecules, and your whole body will start using them, including the brain. And those, the ketones can pass through the cellular wall. They don't need insulin, okay? The ketones pass through the cellular wall, and they make you feel more energetic uh, than the sugar did. And the brain can function on ketones. I used to think your brain can feed only needs sugar because of the blood brain barrier. Well, it turns out that the brain can function very well on ketones. Uh, and your brain uses some ketones all the time. 
It's just if you do this, it'll be operating 80% uh, on uh, ketones. Rates of dementia will be related. You noticed, you may not know, that a lot, a lot of what people think is Alzheimer's disease is actually diabetics. Uh, and the brain um, is not metabolizing enough molecules for energy. Uh, and, and, and diabetes has a lot to do with it because the, in, there's an enzyme called IDE, insulin degrading enzyme. When insulin is no longer functioning in the brain, the IDE enzyme is all used up because the blood sugar was up. But the IDE enzyme is also necessary uh, to help regulate proteins uh, in, uh, in the brain, and they're not available because your insulin level was up. And, that, and, and then the proteins get laid down in the brain, the tau, uh, and they form neurofibrillary tang uh, uh, tangles, uh, and they go inside the cell and outside the cell, and that causes memory loss. Is, isn't that uh, very uh, interesting? So let's uh, kind of review this a little bit. Uh, who can get What's type 1 diabetes? That's where we make no insulin. Uh, and it's usually seen more commonly in children, but it's seen now in adults also. Uh, when the adults no longer can stuff sugar in the cell for, en for energy, and then the pancreas, after a while, secreting insulin all the time, all of a sudden becomes dead. And then you need type 1. Uh, now you're type 1 diabetic too. About 10% of the people are type 1. Uh, and 90% are type 2, okay? Uh, type 1, they need the insulin. And, and years ago, before we knew about this, 1910, 1905, the people would always die. Uh, they would die. They would just waste away. Uh, and, but you know, they, through autopsy, they also found if you never had insulin uh, available in your body, People don't have vast disease, autopsies on the type 1 diabetic, especially the children. There's no evidence of vast disease. So the vast disease is caused by the insulin. And the insulin was elevated because the sugar was uh, elevated. They think the majority of type 1s is due to autoimmune disease. But find out now uh, that there are other causes of it, like gluten, uh, a protein. Uh, that some people don't uh, tolerate it, uh, and uh, pe uh, people who have, don't tolerate uh, uh, gluten uh, have an autoimmune attack uh, on the uh, pancreas and knock out the insulin. That's the reason. And interestingly enough, and here's one you don't hear much about, milk can do it too. Yes, cow's, cow's milk can do it. Uh, and, and part of the reason is where does cow's milk come from. First thing, uh, when a calf is born, they inject it with a hormone. Mm -hmm. So we increase milk production 10 times. They put it in a cage and they put pesticides and herbicides on it to keep it alive. And that's what your kid is drinking. Okay. So, uh, uh, and, and the protein in milk, the uh, uh, casein, uh, uh, the thinking is attacking the pancreas and causing uh, people who drink a lot of milk increased rate of type 1 diabetics. Uh -huh. Isn't that interesting? So, but adults can get it too. And, and some teenagers are adult diabetics. They didn't have type 1. They were type 2 because they eating, eating the wrong food. They gained a lot of weight. And, and, but again, they may be one of these, what we call skinny fat people, uh, uh, where they have abnormal uh, blood tests and they're diabetic, although they're, they're thin. Uh, okay, so it's important to get your children tested. Pediatricians, uh, family doctors, are not testing children properly because the biggest rate of increased obesity has been the two to six year of age. Mm -hmm. So get your very young kids properly tested. Blood sugars, serum insulins, uh, make sure they have a proper weight that you're not raising them on a high sugar diet, which a lot of 
uh, parents are doing today because they probably don't know, don't know better. Uh, and a lot of times when the children were in the uterus, when the genetic code is being written, when a child is, when the egg and the sperm fertilize, uh, only about 5% of the genetic script has been written. So what the mother is feeding herself is what she's feeding the ba uh, baby with, uh, and she can turn the child into a diabetic by alcohol, cigarettes, type of food. She is writing the genetic script of the baby. So when the baby is born, uh, they're more likely to get certain diseases, congenital anomalies, genetic changes, increased rates of uh, cancer, all done by uh, what the mother is doing. So it's very important that the, the uh, mother eat a proper diet, exercise regularly, maybe even listen to some music, the Mozart effect, because the infant in there can hear rhythms at three or four months of age, the ear is the first thing to develop. Mm -hmm. The ear, is the, it has the smallest blood vessels, and the ear is the first thing. That's the reason when you hear about the Mozart effect, he was probably listening to what parents were playing the violin and music and, and singing songs, and he came out able uh, to play instruments almost with, without a lesson. So that's the way our genetic system uh, 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 works. Uh, so what c can we do uh, to help prevent diabetes? And it's 200 diseases that are related to it. Is first of all to respect uh, the baby in there as to what uh, we're eating, to get proper blood testing done serum insulins, blood sugars, uh, check um, uh, on, the, on the weight, uh, keep track of it in a computer uh, or in a book, write down at least yearly blood testing. All the children uh, and, and the parents, and you will have some control uh, of your uh, future. Uh, and and gather some more information. You can get an awful lot off the internet. I mean, just Google it. You can learn anything, but maybe uh, read Dr. Kraft's book here, Rudy's War on Diabetes. I go through the whole uh, thing. I think Jelinek's book, uh, Goodbye Pil Pills and Needles, if you're interested already. If you're sort of an advanced stage, uh, maybe you gained a little bit of weight. Uh, that's not even necessary. Simply keto by Susan Ryan. Uh, these are pretty cheap books. You can get them on Amazon, but you can get them also here in the library. But to be healthy, uh, you got to participate, you know, in your, in your health care a little bit. Uh, and and, and uh, you think I was born that way? No, I, things I learned <laughs> over the years. And I'd like to share it with you because I want you to live to be 100 and tap dance with me or challenge me in uh, pickleball or just walk through nature and we can whistle and sing a song to nature together. And besides, if you do this, uh, you'll feel energetic and, and look good. So, but you need to gather some information. Look at our other shows, uh, online, YouTube, Rudy Cashman, uh, I've probably got a few thousand YouTube shows on there. Uh, gather some uh, information. If you fall asleep the next day, watch another one. I do on Facebook. I do some posting. Just ten minutes. Uh, YouTube shows maybe an hour. You can always turn them off and on. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I did this because I love you, care about you. Uh, namaste. Thanks so much.